The hardest part of all of this, everything we're talking about, is one simple thing. Making the time to do it. That's it. Making the time for your precious self to eliminate the people in your life and the things that you do just for a short period of time when you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed at night and you say, okay, what is the greatest ideal of myself that I want to be today? But listen, I'm not going to get up until I am this person. And you begin to wrestle with your limitations and overcome them. You know, there's so much talk in the United States about self-love, you know. People think self-love is getting a manicure or buying a sports mm. car. That, that's not self-love. That's pleasure. Self-love is when you're sitting with yourself and you are working on overcoming your hardwired thoughts mm. or beliefs or your emotional propensities that are connected to your past. And you are really working to overcome them. And right on the other side of your pain is freedom. Right on the other side of your fear is courage. Right on the other side of your sadness is joy. It's the same energy. It's just trapped in the body. And when you stretch yourself past that point and you break free from the chains of those emotional addictions, mm. the side effect of that is called joy. And the body is liberated from that level of mind. And when that happens, there's available energy to create with. And so when you break through that, you begin to love yourself. You begin to respect yourself and you begin to love and respect others because you see yourself in them and now that you're free from it you can understand them with compassion without knee jerking in the same way so the difficulty here is really making the time to do it and if you began to think about a new way of being and you moved into a state where you said I'm not going to get up until I am this person and not only did you memorize it neurologically in your brain but you allowed the thoughts that you were thinking to become the experience to the point that your body as the unconscious mind began to live in that future reality in the present moment. And when you got up, when mind and body were working together in that state of being, and you said, I'm going to maintain the state of being my entire day, and I don't care. Bring on the challenges because mm. I want to test my greatness. And you did that the entire day. The end of your day, when you finished your day, more than likely you'd have more energy than when you start. The literal translation of the word meditation in Tibetan means to become familiar with. The symbol means to become familiar with. So if you're becoming conscious of or familiar with your unconscious self to the point you're so conscious of your unconscious thoughts, so familiar with your unconscious habits and so aware of your uh, emotions that you would never let them go by unnoticed by you. That there, there's no chance for you to return back to the old self, to know thyself. And then if you became, became familiar with a new self because you neurologically fired and wired it in your brain and you emotionally conditioned your body and you were able to do it enough times, sooner or later it would get easier and it would become more familiar to you and you would be able to move into that state of being. By the way, a new state of being is a new personality. And a new personality mm. is a new personal reality. One of the things about substances mm -hmm. is that it right. actually helps to change chemistry in the brain and body. So uh, there becomes a chemical dependence on it at that mm -hmm. point. But the person who wants to change has to want to change. That's the first element. It in other is. words, so, no one can make you change, uh, but you have to find it in you to really see if this is what you want to do. And I've studied people uh, over the last you know, 12 years. Why is it that one person, an old timer, can look at his x-rays and see in a spot on his lungs and the doctor will say to him, hey, George, you know, that's a spot on your lungs. It's nothing now, but if you keep smoking, it will be. And that guy just takes his cigarettes, throws them in the trash, and he's done the next day. How do you explain that? He made the decision, and the decision was an experience, and it began to rewrite his chemistry and his biology. Hey, how can a person who moves into a state of religious ecstasy, a state of absolute faith, drink strychnine and not get poisoned by it? It's a decision. Wow. It's an energetic decision. It's how powerful the mind really is. Well, so people then who actually want to make the decision to change have to make the decision with firm intention. Once you understand the how-to, that you can't use your conscious mind to do this. You have to move beyond the analytical mind. And when you understand brainwave patterns and when you slip into a different state of mind, that it's, it's easier to do it. So most people then, 
you know, 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a set of memorized habits and behaviors that become part of our identity or personality. So 5% of the conscious mind is trying to change 95% of what we've memorized, hardwired, become addicted to emotionally. So the person may want to think positively, but they've been feeling negatively and oiling those programs for the last 25 years. They may want a new life with a, a new conditions, and as they use their mind, conscious mind, to focus on that, their subconscious mind, they've been, they've been programmed to feel guilty. That's mind and body in opposition. We have to begin to recondition the body to a new mind. So change isn't hard. It's just that you've got to get the manual to understand how to begin to unlearn and relearn, to break the habit of the old self and reinvent the new self. You know, Newtonian physics is about cause and effect. You know, you and I wait for, for most people, they wait for a reason to feel joyful. They wait for a reason to feel gratitude. And when the event happens, then they give thanks. That's cause and effect. Uh -huh. The quantum model of reality really says something different. The quantum model of reality says you have to change your mind and body, thoughts and feelings ahead of the actual event so your brain and body are physically changed to look like it's already happened. So if you begin to give thanks ahead of the experience, and your body, by the way, is the unconscious mind, it does not know the difference between an event in your life that produces an emotion or an emotion that you fabricate by thought alone. To the body, it's the exact same. Okay. So, if you could begin to move into a state in which you were giving thanks before it took place, and you could convince your body emotionally that that event already happened because you were in a state of gratitude, then you would begin to literally biologically change your body to no longer be a record of the past, but now, in fact, a map to, a, to the future because if your brain and body are beginning to respond neurologically and chemically, now you're moving into a new state of being. And if you can get up in that state of being, then what you did inside of you should cause an effect outside of you. So the quantum model says then that we have to give thanks ahead of the event. We have to move into the state of joy and change our energy before it happens, so much so that we're not using our senses to determine re reality any longer. So if we're living by the emotion of pessimism, right, or depression, or sadness, or the emotion which is connected to the past is actually filtering your perception. In order for you to begin to see possibility, you got to look at the thoughts that are creating that pessimism, that are happening behind the scenes of your awareness. you got to look at your behaviors that demonstrate pessimism or unhappiness and then you got to look at the, the other emotions that are you know generated from pessimism and when you can observe those programs it means you're no longer the program you're the consciousness observing the program and if you can become so familiar with your the way you think act and feel so much so that they would never go by unnoticed by you biologically and neurologically and chemically you would begin to break the circuits in your brain that are connected to the old you because nerve cells that no longer fire together no longer wire together and if you no longer signal the same gene emotionally because uh -huh. you're no longer allowing those emotions to be created in the body and you begin to say now let me think about what joy looks like let me begin to demonstrate optimism and you begin to read about say Ernest Shackleton who crossed the Antarctic and right. all those men and spent 600 days away because of his optimism, he overcame. You began to think, well, if that guy can do, do it, it, I can do it. And then you began to plan your behaviors and you began to modify them to produce different experiences that created different emotions. You would literally begin to reinvent neurologically and biologically a new self. But most people don't like to look in the dark place. They would rather turn on the TV or get on the cell phone and complain. But or, awareness is 80% of the solution. Right. right. Why point a radio is, show called the right, Aware Show, yeah. Right. And by my point is you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration. Well, first, usually people wait till they've reached the point where they've broken down. Mm. I'm saying, why wait? Right. Why not just do it? Most people, as I said earlier, are trying to create some type of change in their personal reality but they're still the same personality. We have to become somebody else. So if you were to sit down and you began to think about a new way of being, a new thought that would connect to a new emotion that could drive you to plan a new behavior, and you reviewed that enough times, there's a good possibility that you would change your brain neurologically 
and you would emotionally signal your body chemically to signal new genes to look like your brain and body already have the experience. The biological and neuroscientific wow. model says it's possible. And if you could get up as a different person than you sat down, now here's the key, and then to maintain that modified state of being your entire day, independent of your environment, hmm. something unusual should happen in your life. That's the law. So <clears throat> it's like this. Most people do a meditation. They have a great meditation. And then they spend the rest of the day in a state of stress, judgment or, or stress. Yeah. Just like mm -hmm. eating an organic, healthy breakfast and then spending the rest of your day eating junk food. Right. The purpose of meditation is to prime the brain and body into a new state of being, to elevate your sense of self so that the environment is no longer, you're not affected it. Actually, you've changed something inside of you, both neurologically and chemically in mind and body, that now you're beginning to produce an effect in your environment. So I always recommend experiment in your reality. We are scientists in our life. Now when you say, I move through my day with grace and ease and flow finds me and I live in no time and accomplish everything. Yeah. There is a biological effect that's taking place in your body mm. and as you begin to feel like what that would feel like when mind and body are working together, now you get up in a state of being because a state of being is when thoughts and feelings are aligned. Now, you have to practice that enough times so that it begins to become familiar to you. But if you did this and you said, okay, you know, universal mind, quantum field, giver of life, I took time out of my day to emulate you as a creator. So listen, if I'm just a child of God and I'm practicing this and experimenting, I got to know that you're real. So listen, if you've been paying attention to my efforts, show me a sign, but don't show me a typical sign. Show me a sign that, that I could never predict, that surprises me, that leaves no doubt that what I did inside of me produced some result outside of me so that I'm inspired to do it again.